Hey guys, it's Jeremy here, and I wanna be showing you how to use the Texturino plugin in Illustrator. There's a cool company called Astute Graphics, and they actually make the best plugins for Illustrator. I remember I got this plugin off Design Cuts in a pack. I got it for like, I think like 20, 20 bucks, and it came with some other sample textures as well. And it's really useful, and it makes make playing with textures so much easier in Illustrator. Um, instead of like, you know, making your own TIFFs or doing vector um, textures, you can actually use this method, which is really useful. So it looks a bit complicated with this, um, these features here, but it's actually really easy to use. And once you get the hang of it, you actually have so much control and flexibility, like it's insane. So on my artboard, I have this circle with just a gold color. And what I'm gonna do now, I've opened up my Texturino um, plugin window, as you can see here on the left. And you can see on the left here, this is what it looks like, the, the original, it has like a square. That's how it looks like. I won't show you how to install the plugin today, um, there's plenty of tutorials how to do that. But what I want to do now, I'm going to select my object as I do normally. And we've got some options. First, I want to show you the settings that you can actually change. So you, you just want to click on your hamburger menu and you want to go to texture preferences. And you can see, you can play around with these settings here if you want. So it can look a bit different and you can always alter that and play around with that. You see, if you click on this one, you've got some shortcuts and video tutorials and other stuff to the Astute Graphics website, which will help you out. And you've got some other options like import textures, texture manager, and package textures. So the first one is, I wanna click import textures. You can also click this button here as well. You can see it's an arrow with like a book. So I can click that and I'm gonna locate to some of my folders. So I'm gonna go to my texture in a folder and you can see I've got all these cool textures. So I'm gonna double click and pretty much if I, if I select one of these, if I select all these textures, it's gonna import it into Texturino. Because I've already done that, I don't have to do anything. So usually you click import and it will do it for you. So you can see here, it's importing all the textures, but because I've already have it and I get that message. So once they're imported, what I have to do is you can see I've got all these textures here. I can actually search by category. So instead of all, I can do favorites. Because I have no favorites, I have to go to my texture manager. And to do that, I can click on the hamburger menu and click texture manager. So these will be all the textures that you've imported into the system. So you can see it's got all the names. I can rename the textures if I click rename and type it in. I can search, I can change the category of the texture. So you can see maybe it's a different category, I can change it. I can also search, make it repeating. So I'm actually altering this. It gives me some control on how to you know, edit these. I can change the blending mode. So when I load it into Illustrator, it's gonna, maybe I want it to come up with multiply blend mode. And maybe I wanna actually make it a favorite and then I'll see it. I can choose a couple of these ones. So, you know, maybe this one's my favorite. I can click favorite and you'll see you'll get a little dot in that menu there, that toolbar. I can also export the textures as well but you don't really have to do that. I can also delete the textures as well. If I don't like them, I can just click this bin and it'll delete it. So I'm gonna quickly cancel that. And now I wanna add the texture to my circle. So I'm gonna to go to the window, the texturina window, and I wanna click the plus button. But first I wanna make sure that I add a texture. So I'm just gonna click this blue chip paint and click that big plus button. And you can see it's added the texture to my shape. So you can see if I click and drag, it's gonna move the texture around as you can see that, and you can see this gray box around the square. If I wanna just move my actual object, I have to click off, so press V for the selection tool so I can move my object around. Whenever I actually wanna edit the texture, I can select the image and just click on this little area here, as you can do there. You can also favorite it from here, and you can also plus to zoom in on the texture really quickly to see what type of texture it is, which is really handy. So I can click off the minus. So you can see we've got three key parameters we can edit. So you can see we can change the blending mode. So overlay, I can change it to whatever. So it's all the blending modes that are in Illustrator. So I can play around with that. I like multiply. Or I can leave it on normal if I want. I can also alter the scale. So you can see this button, I can scale it up. If you keep scaling it too high, it's gonna the PPI is gonna become lower and it's also gonna become pixelated. If I scale it down, you can see the PPI is staying high, which, is which we want. So if we print this, you wanna make sure the PPI is at least 300, which is what we want. But because if it's digital, it's okay. It can be 72 at least. So I can scale that up. 
I can also use the opacity. I can drop the opacity of the actual texture as you can see there and bring it up. I can also rotate so you can see this little red ball on this side, I can rotate the texture as well. So you can see you've got all these tools. You've got absolute and relative, you don't just ignore that, that does, doesn't really make a difference. So you can play around with that. You can also scale it from the little gray box as well, which is super handy. You can move it around. So that's super cool. If I don't want this certain type of texture, I can actually go and search by color. So if I just want color textures, it's going to show me different color textures. But if I just want gray, I just click the boxes off on the top here. And it's going to show me different textures that I can use. Some are going to be non-repeating, which means it's not, it's like not tiled, but majority of textures um, won't have that anyway. I can also stack textures as well. So maybe I want to add this, some more colored textures on top. Maybe I want this one. I can just add that by pressing the plus button and it's going to add it on top and I'll scale it down a bit as you can see there, which is actually really cool. If I want to replace the current texture, so maybe I don't like this other texture that I added, I can click on another one and press this button. You can see the second big button. It's got like an arrow with like two squares and it's going to replace that texture with that one. So you can see this texture has like some writing on it. It's pretty interesting. And I can play around. I can just always change it. If I want to reset the te texture to its default setting, I can click this arrow button and it's going to reset it to the default. I can also get rid of the texture by pressing the X and it's going to remove the texture. So if I click this texture, I can remove that one as well. And you can see I've already got one on the bottom there and I can remove that. So now I've got no textures, but if I press plus, I can add this one that I wanted straight away. Super cool. So you can see we can play around and you get so many cool effects with it. I'm going to get my texture brush up now. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to select my texture and I'm going to click on this gray area. And the brushes work the same as Photoshop. So it's like a vector mask pretty much or an opacity mask. So what I want to do, I'm going to open the expand the panel so we can see all the options. You can see here we've got a few options here. There's also the opacity brush, but it's the pretty much the same thing as the texture brush. But the only thing with the texture brush here that's different is you can target a texture. So if I have multiple textures on here, I can select them in this area and that's going to make me edit that texture. But if I only have one texture, then all these settings are just going to apply for this one here. So you can see I can also reset the mask. So if I want maybe 40% opacity, I can click reset mask. And it's going to set that mask where the texture is to 40%. I can just do it, redo it and put it to 100 to make it go back to normal. I can increase and decrease the size of the brush with the size panel here. You can also use the square brackets on the keyboard, like Photoshop, same thing. I can decrease the hardness, so maybe I want it to be more soft. You'll get a fade. If I want it hard, I can click bring the hard up and it's going to be like straight. I can bring the opacity down of the brush, as you can see here. And if you accidentally select off it, you can just select the texture and click back on the brush, as you can see there. So I can bring the opacity up, I can bring it down. As you can see, it will have a less effect on the thing. But maybe you just want to rub out subtle areas, which is totally fine. And you've got the noise as well. You don't really notice it though. It just makes it, makes it a bit more grainy, the um, mask, but I think you don't really need that. You can I can also change the roundness, so I can type in maybe 20%. It's going to change. You can see it's on like an oval shape now, which is pretty interesting. So you can change that shape. I can also change the angle as well. Maybe if I want to go on a 40 degree angle, you can see now the brush is changed. So you literally have so much flexibility, it's crazy. So cool. You've got some other options here as well, but these are mainly if you have a Wacom tablet or whatever tablet you use. And But because I'm using a mouse, it doesn't matter. So that's totally fine. So you can see here we, get some re we can get some cool effects. I can play around with it. And it pretty much works as a brush. So I want to bump this and drop the opacity down. So maybe I'm just going to, even if it's like a logo, I can just rub out certain bits that I don't like. And, you know, just play around with different stuff. So I can add... What else we got? Green graffiti. Yeah, we can add those textures. 
So by quickly playing around, you can see I can get some cool effects. That looks pretty cool. Bring the opacity up, scale it. Super cool. And once again, I can go to my texture brush and I can select the different textures. As you can see there, and just rub them all out if I want. You can see it's getting rid of it. Totally cool. I'm gonna quickly delete all those textures. And if I go to my grayscale, it's a bit different. I can actually use these textures and change the color. So maybe I wanna go select wall. Okay, there's nothing there. I'll go retro supply. I'll go, let's find a good one. Greasy foam, I'm gonna add that one in. So you can see here with the grayscale ones, I can actually change the color. So if I go to my swatches panel, I can change the color. So maybe I want to, I'll go here. Scale it down a bit. So you can see I'm actually changing the color there. Which is cool. Use, I can use the texture bus. Another thing with the texture brush as well, if I hold Alt or Option, I can actually minus. So you can see, if I if I don't hold it, then I can I'm going to hide stuff. But if I minus, it's going to bring back the texture, as you can see there. Brings it back to life. So it's just like a normal mask that you'll usually do. You can see so yeah that's how you use texturino hopefully it was helpful and if you invest in the plugins it will be really helpful it's going to speed up your process and it's going to be really awesome so yeah thanks guys for watching hit that like button hit subscribe and i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial leave a comment in below if it was useful or not and i look forward to making another tutorial for you guys next week mm -hmm.